Um, I think this is an issue in which there's been a lot of discussion in the last number of years. Um, one thing we need to uh, understand is that um, free capital flows uh, uh, can benefit countries in a couple of different ways. Uh, one is when they add to the domestic resources uh, for investing uh, in, um, uh, in, in the, for, for investment in the country concerned and also for helping in developing uh, financial markets with the greater availability of liquidity. Now, what has happened, in fact, in the last uh, 10 years or so is there's actually many of the emerging markets, and particularly in Asia, have really been exhibiting current account surpluses. So obviously, the capital flows from elsewhere are not adding to their investment resources. And therefore, it is uh, debatable whether the f greater availability of capital flows uh, have actually uh, aided uh, these countries. However, in some countries like India, for example, uh, where we do have, have had current account deficits, then of course, uh, greater capital flows do add to our in investable resource and that's very beneficial. But at the same time, uh, when these capital flows are excessive, then they affect uh, credit markets, they uh, lead to exchange rate appreciation and also greater volatility uh, because the capital flows uh, have typically been very volatile and then they cause uh, difficulties in macroeconomic management in these countries. So it's a very mixed picture. You, one thing is clear, you cannot say uh, with certainty that the large increase in global capital flows has indeed helped emerging market countries all the time. Sometimes yes, sometimes not. Well, I wish we had a clear potential uh, to outpace China's growth in the coming years. Um, again, let me put that in perspective that uh, China has grown at something between 8 and 10 percent a year for almost 30 years now. And therefore, um, a slowdown is inevitable. Uh, the question can be the timing of the slowdown, the pace of the slowdown, etc. But, but a slowdown has to take place. But remember that a country growing at, say, 5%, I'm not suggesting that China is going to grow at 5%, but suppose a country is growing at 5%, uh, once it has reached, uh, say, $6,000 per capita income, the annual change in the GDP is the same as the same country growing at 10% with a $3,000 per capita income. And therefore, even if China slows down now, uh, as it is at now at around 7.5% or thereabouts, the magnitude of growth in China uh, will still be very large and their weight in the global economy has increased significantly. And therefore, even with uh, slowing down of Chinese growth, the impact in terms of uh, uh, um, acting as an engine for global growth will still be there. Then coming to India, um, we are now uh, something like about a third, our per capita income now is something like a third. And therefore, if we get Indian policies right, um, there is a potential for Indian growth to be higher than that of China. But it will take us a very long time, and by very long time I mean like 20 to 30 years, for India to catch up with China even if it grows much faster than China in that period.